Huh. Well, would you look at that? Where my old computer desk used to be has changed even more. Hey, hey folks, welcome to this video. Uh, today we're going to be doing some computer updates again. This isn't exactly a computery part of the update, but this is where my desk used to be that had all the old computers stacked along with my Linux machine. Well, now it looks even more like a bedroom than when I got rid of the than when I put the desk away because uh, now I got a chest of drawers there. However, it's still a little computery because I've got a super wood grainy uh, floppy holder. And of course, an old CD holder I've had for like almost 20 years now. And a busted MacBook battery, yay! But this isn't what you came here to see. Let's show you what you did come here to see. This is what you came here to see. These are my computer updates for the end of 2017, December 2017. And uh, quite a lot has changed since Christmas Day, uh, quite a bit. Um, I believe last time I showed both of these computers next to each other. Um, and if I didn't, here they are. Linux machine, Windows machine, both Ryzen systems. Um, I upgraded the CPUs in each of these, uh, I think, in the last video, and that's when we last talked about them. But quite a bit's changed in the peripheral setup since then. This monitor may look different. It's still a ViewSonic monitor, but it's a much newer ViewSonic monitor. Um, you might be curious as to what it is. Well, it's one of these. <laughs> This is a ViewSonic VX2778-SMHD 27-inch Quad HD LED backlit display. Essentially, it's a 27-inch 1440p monitor. And I got this for Christmas after asking for it because I really needed it for uh, some of the stuff I do for work. Uh, you know, I thought for a long time that 1080p would be the end-all be-all for me for like a good 5 to 10 years or so, but... Honestly, 1440p has convinced me otherwise that 1440p really is going to be my sweet spot for a very long time. This monitor is 27 inches. It fits perfectly in this little cove here. Couldn't ask for a better size. I think 32 would have been a little too cramped. Look how close the webcam is to the top of the desk there. It's, you can see the shadow there. It's a bit uh, precariously you know, up there, but uh, yeah. I decided to ask for this for Christmas, and I'm very grateful to have this because it's been a godsend to have the screen real estate. You really don't realize how important screen real estate is until you do work on a computer that really requires you looking at a large area of something. And in my case, that's GIS mapping. For things like general purpose computing and gaming, I don't think 1440p really makes much of a difference. I think that's where 4K makes the most difference. But 1440p ups the screen real estate just enough to where um, it adds just enough room to do certain things and for me that was mapping and I'm sure for other people working such as Lewis Rossman or something it'd be schematics or something like that but he needs 4k for that I only need 1440p for this so yeah that's a definitely a good resolution to live with the monitor so far has been very nice um, it has a nice space below it where I can put my controller, the Logitech uh, F310. Uh, I got both of my microphones under here. I have two Samson Go mics, uh, one for each computer uh, hooked up. These mics are excellent for their price and their size. They sound very good. Um, I managed to fit my Dell speakers on either side still. I had to shuffle a bunch of this crap around. I moved my, moved my desk calculator over here um, and uh, my phone, my cordless phone cradle here, my office phone here, and of course the good old wood grain clock right there. So I managed to fit that, and this new KVM switch I managed to fit under there too. That's something we should touch on too. This is a Velbox KVM switch. I got this as new on eBay, and uh, it's one, it, I guess I should back up a bit. It's amazing how crappy most DisplayPort KVM switches are. You go on Amazon or something and you look at them and the reviews are just terrible they stop working after a while it's just the quality control is just awful um, a lot of the StarTech ones I've noticed aren't that great along with the um, I don't know IO gear and some other ones uh, I have a TrendNet KVM switch that's VGA and PS2 that's excellent 
And it seems like older connectors like that, it's not that hard to find a KVM switch that's very good. On the other hand, for DisplayPort, it's kind of difficult. Um, this one's a very, very simple KVM switch. It doesn't have any bells and whistles and extra features. Um, it doesn't have any emulation of any sort. It's just pretty much a point-to-point -point type of thing. Um, it's a two. It's a two. Um, it's a two PC DisplayPort KVM switch, USB and DisplayPort. Uh, it can either output in DisplayPort or HDMI, uh, and it's made by Velbox. These are very good. H these are very good um, DisplayPort KVMs if you ever find them. The only thing I find that is that's a little weird is that they put USB on the front for things like keyboard, mouse, and whatever else. And they put the RS-232 port on the front for, um, you know, look for messing with the firmware on this thing. And um, that's odd that they put that on the front. But you know what? The controls are very simple. No big deal, no frills. Pretty easy to deal with. And it works perfectly on for a 1440p monitor, so I couldn't be happier. If you're looking for a DisplayPort KVM switch, I would take a look at what Velbox offers. Because their stuff is actually pretty decent. It's not just cheap stuff that is resold under a billion brands. This stuff is this one's actually really nice. Still have the same peripherals as I did before. I've got this nice leather at um, wrist rest here with my Topre Type Heaven keyboard with its custom keycaps. Topre. Um, I don't want to say switches, but I guess I could say that. Got my. And in contrast, I got this cheap Staples mouse pad with uh, my Ducky Secret Mouse. Fantastic mouse. I'm glad that LGR mentioned this in a video he did once, because I wouldn't have known about it otherwise, and I decided to give it a shot, and it's a fantastic mouse. Feels very good. I'm very happy with it. And both of these peripherals work perfectly with the KVM switch as well, which is pretty fantastic. And what else is going on besides that? Um... One thing, I will be replacing my work tablet. I, I remember making, I thought I made a video about this, but uh, I've been using this Acer One S. I think I made a video about this tablet a while back. I forget if I did or not, but um, I've, been, I've been using this Acer One S2, uh, 1002 for my, uh, for work, uh, when I go around on site and look at stuff. I would use this tablet and fill out the forms with it. And uh, it's been a very good tablet to me uh, this past, I guess, year and a half that I've used it. But the 32 gigs of storage on it, coupled with Windows 10 and updates that happen every six months, has really gotten old very quickly. So I'm kind of sick of, uh, I'm kind of sick of dealing with that. So what I've decided to do is to sell a machine, sell this thing, and I ended up buying a Dell tablet that, that I'll be making a video of pretty soon. Um, maybe not to replace this, but, um, you know, as a, as a Windows tablet that's not quite as limited and old school as this thing is. Uh, I have a Surface 3, which I don't think I've made a video of yet, which I'll probably use at work instead of this. But the Dell will probably be useful as a general purpose tablet. So that's coming up pretty soon. Um, what else have we got? We have this Dell here that I'm going to make a video of. It's another vintage PC. Uh, and it's one that was very important to me growing up. So we'll get to that in probably the, next, the video after this one. There's also um, a couple videos uh, regarding Macs that you'll see in the future as well. So that should be nice. This is the model of the Velbox that I bought. It is the B0041, in case you're looking for it anywhere. Looks like they sell these in bulk, too, because this was on the box when I got it. So maybe whoever bought a bunch of these had some extras. Now, I'm sure you guys all want to see, uh, see this monitor in action, so I'll prove to you why I like it so much. Let me put it on PC2 there. And we will start up the Linux machine on the left here to show you what a Mate desktop looks like on a 1440p display.
<laughs> there's the Debian boot up screen on such a big thing there so come back once this is logged in and booted up and all that stuff okay now we're at my Linux desktop as you can see this monitor has a nice soft white LED for when it's turned on I really like that as compared to all the blue LEDs you see everywhere nice that the KVM switch also uses red ones instead of blue ones as well forgot to mention that earlier but this is the Linux desktop in 1440p as you can see things get kind of small and you can you can also see it's quite cold outside today um, the icons up here are quite small let me get to the display properties here let's see displays there you go 2560 by 1440 is the resolution that uh, a 1440p monitor is this is a 60 hertz monitor because personally 60, 60 frames a second in a video game is fine by me. I have a 1050 Ti in my Windows PC, and I have an AMD RX 460 in this particular PC. So I'm really not a huge stickler for frame rate as long as it's 60 frames per second. It doesn't bother me that much. I'm not a competitive CSGO player or anything like that, so it's fine for what I do. Uh, well, let's open something like, um, I don't know, LibreOffice. Look how small the, p the paper area is. <laughs> you get all this space, which is pretty nice. So that's what a Linux desktop looks like in 1440p. I think it's time I switch to the Windows desktop and... Uh, show you why this monitor was so important to my needs for work so let's shut this thing off you can do it you can do it that text was very small there but now we just switch to PC1 on the KVM switch and I turn on my main computer while that's booting up I should mention how I switch between audio sources I have this Tom's audio selector, which uses 3.5 millimeter jacks to switch between audio sources. I like this solution better than I did the uh, the AV switchers because the grounding is correct on that. So that's how I switch between audio sources. I just happen to have that from when I had a bunch of vintage computers uh, hooked up, so I decided to use it for this application instead. There you go, Windows 10. So let me log in here. There you go. Setting up device type heaven. Why is it setting all this stuff up again? I don't understand. But there you go. Here's the Windows desktop. Which, of course, has the Ryzen 7 in it and all that stuff. This is the big boy computer. Now, let's open up ArcGIS, which is the mapping program I use. So, ArcMap 10.4. Wait until you see how perfectly a map fits on here. It's not the fastest program in the world. So here's an example of something I'd be using for work. Uh, this map only has the parcels and, the, and uh, the geology enabled at the moment. If I turn that off, I don't think it'll make it. Well, yeah, it does for that little square right there. But um, yeah, this is the view I was talking about. When you have the map in a view like this, 1440p is essential because you can see, you, look how much area you can see. In 1080p, you couldn't see all of that very well. and. Yeah, you can drag the map around, look at all the different, you know, parcels in the neighborhoods and all that stuff. This is exactly what a 1440p display is for. This kind of work. And it's an absolute pleasure to work with this monitor and to look at stuff like this. It, it makes all the difference in the world. And that's why I wanted this monitor so much. And I'm very grateful to have it now. Um, since I got it for Christmas, it doesn't mean I have to get it later in the year. So that's a big plus for me. So thank you. Um, 
there you go. That's the main benefit of this monitor for me, is working with maps like that. And the side benefit is that it's a really big monitor with a lot of space. So let's say I need to work on some documents. Let's open up Word. 2016 here. Let's do a published cover letter. Put that on the side here, and I need to look at a uh, an Excel spreadsheet at the same time. You know, to write about the data that I see when I'm doing whatever it works. So let's look at a uh, let's look at a loan amor amortization sc schedule. This could be a f let's say this is a finance paper or something for a school. So look at this beautiful. You can see everything without any scaling anything. That's the other reason I chose a 1440p display. I can see everything on this 27 inch display with zero scaling. I think what I just demonstrated shows what a benefit it is to have screen real estate. 1440p I would say is the sweet spot um, for price at the moment. 4k I wouldn't go to unless I got a physically bigger monitor, let's say a 32 inch or a 36 inch monitor, that's when I would up the resolution big time because if you were to get a 4K 27 inch monitor, you'd have to start using scaling. And let's face it, software scaling on Windows and Linux both is not very consistent or very good. Um, on Windows it's a bit blurry and on Linux it really depends what desktop environment you're using. Some of them don't even support high DPI features or uh, scaling all that well. Some do though. GNOME 3 I think does pretty well. Um, but other than that, I'm not a huge fan of scaling. So honestly, getting more screen real estate while at the same time being able to not have to scale anything is a huge benefit to me and that's why I think that 27 inch and 1440p as far as resolution and size are an absolute match made in heaven for um, productivity and even gaming too uh, so if if you're like me and you don't like scaling I would recommend this type of setup if you're looking to get a bigger monitor with better resolution if you're gonna go 4k get a physically bigger display than this 32 inch at the least I would say um, but as you saw that extra screen real estate was very helpful with the mapping program that I use and just having two documents next to each other it's it's almost it, it's night a night and day difference even going from 1080p to 1440p it's 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 incredibly good um, I'd imagine for video editing in fact let's see for video editing I'd imagine the timeline would be a lot bigger so let's open power director yeah, see, look at look at all this timeline you get here. That's very nice. On my 1080p display, I only really saw two two of these here, so you get a lot more screen real estate and a lot more space to work with. So it it truly is a nice upgrade. Now, if you if you're big into gaming and high frame rates, I would suggest getting a monitor with a higher refresh rate than this, at least 100 hertz. I would say. Um, maybe 144 hertz if they exist in 1440p. I'm sure they do somewhere. Um, so, yeah, there you go. That's the uh, that's the huge uh, thing for the end of the year is this monitor upgrade. I'm very very happy with it. The bezel-less design is kind of interesting. It leaves just enough space up here so you can fit a webcam or something on top of your computer. So. This monitor is designed very well. For those of you who are looking for a 27-inch 1440p display, this ViewSonic is very good. The other one I've seen that's cheaper than this, actually, this is about a $350 monitor. There's one in the $200 range made by BenQ that is the same size and the same resolution as well that also has an IPS panel. So, there are cheaper options available if you're looking for them. Absolutely. So, definitely a big benefit. So, there you go. Definitely uh, higher resolutions, at least up to 1440p at the moment, are a good thing to have. So, what's coming in the future? In the next video, you're probably going to see this machine, this Dell Inspiron here. And in the future, you're going to see some more Mac stuff besides that. Some very special Mac stuff. A lot of it's childhood computer-related stuff and is quite nostalgic to me. And... Uh, the nostalgia itself is not all that makes it interesting. There's going to be some pretty cool stuff in those videos. Uh, multiple videos about each machine. It, it, it's going to be a fun time. So, 
2018 I think is going to usher in some really fun videos. So to make up for a bit of my absence during the latter part of 2017, I think we're going to come up with some really good stuff in 2018. So I wish you all a happy new year and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.